Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. Sometimes it's deceptively hard. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We're not talking about your bowel movements either, are we? Well, that's rude. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got today for us then, Mike? Not a f***ing clue. Really? Um, well, I've got a story about something unexpected in a hotel room. Is it a human turd? <laughs> no, unexpected. Oh. oh. Okay. On screen now you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media where you can follow us, the Cud.tv for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as the names of people who have reached out and lovingly caressed us go along the bottom of the screen, it's time to go over to Lee and the showbiz. <laughs> Are you are you aware of of um, Pedro Pascal? Yes. Is he is he is he just in the feature bank. in your? Is he's he in the bank? Oh, okay. Well, you'll be yeah. very excited because he's about to Straight start. Out. Well, I don't know if he actually has uh. in this, but potentially could be. Mm, so he the, 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 he's going to be starring in a gay western. Okay. Brought back mountain. Well, everyone's going brought back mountain, but I don't think it's. I think the only thing similar about it is that they're cowboys. Okay. The rest of it is, is a completely different story. So apparently he's 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 the internet's favourite daddy. He's been in lots of things. Mm -hmm. um, so we, have you watched The Last of Us? Nope. Do you not want to? I do, but not yet. Why? Because it, it had so much hype about it. Oh, okay. I want to give it some time for the hype stack. Because I have a feeling if I watch it now, I'll be disappointed. Because of the anticlimax. So he's been in loads of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Last of Us. Me. Mm, well, you hope he's yeah. doing that. Mandalorian. I have not watched the Mandalorian. Love, it's love him in the Mandalorian. Yeah, like no. Star Wars kind of stuff. Um, apparently, he's called a cool slutty daddy. Mm. Okay. Okay. So he's he's going to be starring in this in this film opposite Ethan Hawke. Oh. Okay. Who's who has matured into a into a kind of daddy. He has himself. So he, they're both starring in Pedro Amolvadar's Queer Western Strange Way of Life. Okay. Um, there's the, the poster. Mm -hmm. There's him starring with a horse. That's not Ethan Hawke, that's an actual horse. Okay. You know, easy to, to, to kind of make the same, same mistakes. So they play, so he, so Pascal plays a gunslinging cowboy mm -hmm. who goes across the desert to find an old friend uh -huh. who is a sheriff who's, who's played by Ethan Hawke. Um, and um, it's right from the outgo. They're gay. Offset. Offset, outgo, that kind of, whatever word you choose to use. They're, they're, they're gay. Okay. So there's no kind of like umming and ahhing about it and no kind of like, we should quit you, like shenanigans. Um, so, yeah, so they're kind of like, what do you, what, what? I still have mental scarring from the last time you did that. The spitting in the hand. And, uh, ugh, you did. <laughs> That's... So the, tra the trailer is out. Okay. And there is a tender neck smooch situation oh. going on in it. Do you like a neck smooch? Do you like a neck smooch? Um, so they obviously have been lovers at some point in this, this story and they get back together. Um, some, must be some sort of fight and Pascal's character is tending the wounds of um, Ethan oh. Hawke and he says, you never loved me, you've never loved anyone in your life. Nice. Mm, yeah. That's heartwarming. And, yeah, but then he gets, because it was, as the trailer does recalls, he says to Hawk, who's been injured in his lining about years ago, you asked me what two men could do living together in a ranch. I'll answer you now. And then he goes balls deep. I don't no know if he does that. Just dry. Just, just a... No, and spit just goes... No, mm. just a huff. <sighs> just to warm his palm up. Um, <laughs> there's... <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. No. No. There's no set date yet for it to be premiered. <laughs> no set date for release. <laughs> um, but it's, it's been put up for the Cannes Film Festival. So oh, obviously right. has, it has good word, of, good word of mouth. It's got good mouth in it. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's, got, it's, it's going to be one of those um, films that everyone raves about because of the cast. Well, we will be getting the inevitable sort of flack from... The gammons that say, mm, gay people, yeah, yeah. It'll have the whole, it's like, oh, I don't want my kids to watch it. Then don't oh, and then there'll it. be the kind of, should gay, should only gay actors play gay characters? Mm -hmm. Who cares? I mean, uh, Pedro is, you know, a big ally with the LGBT community. Yeah. Um, his sister is trans. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
Just shut up. <laughs> That's all I have to say about I'll that. I'll let him spit in my mouth. <sighs> don't like it. Don't like that. That's right, I'm asking you to do it. Okay. Well, that's, that will be coming out soon. So you can go to the cinema. Open mouthed. <laughs> take, a, take a blanket over the top, a coat. To one off. I'm not you. I don't do that in cinemas. You do it in the studios. Mm. Anyway, we've, we've, got a, we've, got an, we've got a birthday, a big birthday coming up. Not mine. Oop. Not mine. Not yours. Russell T. Davis, he's turning 60. Is he only nine years older than you? Shut your face, <laughs> That's a yes, Lee. <sighs> so, Russell T. Davis is one of the most prolific screenwriters. Well, easy for me to say. That wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been the writer behind It's a Sin, Years and Years, Queer of Folk, loads and loads and loads of stuff. He's, um, so we've got a picture of him. He's going back to Doctor Who. Yes. To, to write episodes of Doctor Who. So there he is in the TARDIS. Is it the TARDIS? TARDIS, TARDIS. yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, and there he is. David Tennant era TARDIS, in case you... Is that, is that it? It's not new? No, no it's, it's an older one. Okay. That's and there he is. Circa 2006. Yeah, all right, geek. Um, and there he is with um, Ollie Alexander from Years and Years when they got the BAFTA for... The group. Years and Years. Not the TV show. Because Russell T. Davis wrote Years and Years. He did. But that was the TV show, not the group. And yeah, Ollie so, the, 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 the so Ollie Alexander is from the band Years and Years. Yes. Not the TV show. Not years. the TV show Years and Years that, uh, that, that Russell T. Davis wrote. He's in the band. Mm -hmm. I made that more complex than it needed You did. To you didn't yeah, yeah. need to. I think people really kind of understood that. Yeah. So what I thought would oh, be quite oh. interesting is, because he's written so many television programmes, some of them we might not have even kind of remembered okay um gonna give some recommendations oh for tv shows now you might have seen some of these you might you might not have seen them okay so so the first one mm -hmm. is kind of recent so we've got nolly mm -hmm. um which tells the story of noel gordon the actress yes um it was a legend in her own lifetime flame-haired widow meg richardson in the long-running soap of crashes i didn't actually watch it i kept meaning to watch it but i never watched it you never watched it no i never watched that i haven't watched this Mm -hmm. But I've watched Crossroads. Right. I'm aware of it from, from a long time ago. Have you watched Have you watched Mac? I have watched Nolly. Is it good? I, I really enjoyed it because um, it's got Helena Bonham Carter in it. Yes. And she's one of my favourite actresses. She's a bit, bit doolally, isn't she? I think that's why I like her so much. Oh, OK. The um, good thing is you can still watch it on ITVX. Which is not Pornhub. Which is not Pornhub. No, it's it's a completely different thing. Um, so yeah, that that's more of a, a recent. I think that came out last year, possibly. Oh. Yeah. Now the next one recommendation is Cucumber. Okay. So that was a series that he wrote in 2013, and it was commissioned oh, yeah. with E4. Uh huh. Alongside, because there was like had spin-offs. Yeah, there was Cucumber, Banana, uh -huh. and Tofu, which was on. Yeah. 4OD. So that the, the series of Cucumber focuses on middle-aged Henry Best following a disastrous date night with his boyfriend of nine years. His whole life kind of falls apart. Uh -huh. So we've got posters. So it's kind of like a um, story of like middle-aged gays kind like of me. going through. Like you, yes. Um, there are some young gays in it as well. Yeah, it's got, um, and what's his name, Freddie Fox. Yes. So beautiful. Do we see his wang? No oh, wang. You definitely see bottom. Is there bottom, but no wang? Definitely, I, I can't remember seeing any wang. I, I'm not still watching it, so I'm assuming okay. there's no wang. Well, yeah, so so that's a quite that's quite a good one because it gives a different mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah, because it's a story told from multiple angles. So if you watch mm. Cucumber and then you watch Banana and then you watch Tofu in that order, yes, as the episodes come out, so you watch episode one of Cucumber, episode one of Banana, episode one of, of Tofu, and, and all the stories link in between them. Yeah, yes. and it's all from different viewpoints. It's really well. I really enjoyed watching it. Did you? When it came out. Yeah. Well, that you can still watch it now on uh, all four, should you choose to. Um, next up is A Very English Scandal. Okay. So, um, oh, this, the show, not the just, show. just a scandal. No, the, so this is, this is Ben Wilshaw and Hugh Grant, um, which is a comedy drama set in the kind of time when homosexuality had just been decriminalised in the UK. It was a three-parter, so it wasn't a particularly very long one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But um, um, which um, had rave reviews. Again, that's not that. I kind of want to say the last five years that came out. Ben Wishall, though. Do you like him? Oh, I've never been so attracted to Paddington Bear in my life. 
Oh, was he in Paddington? He's the voice of Paddington. Oh, is he? Was yeah. he in Was he in James Bond? In Q in James Q. Bond. Yeah. I want to say he was in another one where he played a doctor. Um, he was in... Um, oh, Benedict Cumbers Cumbersnatch. Sherlock Holmes. Oh. Benedict Cumberbatch, he was in that as well. Okay. I... Yeah. There was a BBC series where he played a, a gay doctor. Was it? Okay. Uh, BBC Two, I think it was. It. Um, yeah, and that had like, lots of snuggy scenes and all that kind of stuff. And of course, Rusty Davis also wrote other things. He did write other Greatest things. Greatest Folk. Yes, which and is both a big the UK one. And, oh, a very big one. <laughs> um, we've always said Doctor Who. Mm. Mm. I like Doctor Who. It's fine. Oh, Whatever. Says you wearing that outfit. Whatever. So let's just wish him a big 60th birthday. Or a happy birthday. Or a happy it, birthday. Yeah. Well, it's a big, it's a big achievement. I hope you have a big birthday. Well, it might not be. It might be just a, a small, quiet one at home. <laughs> Writing about gays. Who knows? Anyway, I do believe that might be the end of this week's showbiz news. Ooh. Oh. Thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to know that some people are getting big as they get older. You're welcome, Mike. Stick around because after this we've got Mike and the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get prepared to be slightly bored and go over to Mike and the Buzz. I'm going to talk about poo. Not your poo. Well, that's a pleasant change. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, talk about your dog's poo. Okay. Are you a plastic or a paper kind of person? A paper? Yeah, pa poo bags. Do you get paper poo bags? Yeah, you can get paper poo bags. No, I'm plastic. Plastic. Just, just, um... Just, uh, <laughs> ooh, what's that word? I don't know. No! <laughs> not... Abduction? Not, <laughs> <laughs> not forever. Not around forever, not forever. Just dis dis disappear into the into the earth. Okay. Biodegradable. That's it. Biodegradable poo bags. Yes. yes. Okay. And you just carry them loose in your pocket. No, I have a I have a I have a, I have a dog shaped receptacle. Okay. That you put them into the dog shaped receptacle, and it clips on your belt, and then you pull one out of its bum hole. It's very stylish. Okay, you're not just putting the poo bags in the dog, are you? No, it's a okay. thing. Just checking. Uh, mine's bone shaped. Bone shaped. It's a bone, and it comes out the middle of the bone. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, like you, I also have the the uh, biodegradable ones, but I can use the word quite quickly. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a story about a man who possibly doesn't know about these bags, okay? Um, because he's just been fined seven hundred and fifty pounds. For not picking up his dog's poo. In the In world. his back garden. Uh... There's a lot of poo there. <sighs> All right, deep sigh. Yeah, it's not acceptable, is it, really? It's not. There's a, there's a lot of poo. There's a lot of poo, and um, that, that patio needs a good air wash, doesn't it? Air wash. air wash? Air wash? Power wash. Yeah. I don't know words today. You don't know. No. No, that, that is that's gross, and the stench that must come off that if it gets sunny. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah the council actually being involved because neighbours have complained about the smell uh, when it gets hot. Ooh. It's, you know, it's concrete as well, so it'll hold the heat. So oh, it'll hold it in. Continually cooked, hot dog shit. <laughs> why did you? Why did your mouth water when you said that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think that. That, that he was justifiably fined. Uh huh. I think he should be fined more. And possibly have his dog taken off him. I, I think maybe that's a bit extreme. No. No. The dog I didn't say, you know, saying, you know, take it off him and. No, I'm not going to say that. You're what I was going to say. Point down, I, know, I was going to say eat it. Um, <laughs> but that would have been a very extreme punishment. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if, that, if that's how his back garden is, mm. I kind of dread to think what is. But it's outside, isn't it? So some people are like. Mm. What really irritates me mm. is when somebody obviously goes for a walk with a dog. The dog does a doo doo, mm -hmm. and uh, hello, I'm five, and um, puts it in the doggy Oops. poo bag, uh -huh. and then just hangs it on a branch <laughs> and just goes like a shitty. Christmas it's like moment. that is that. I you should get fined for that. 
You can do because it's not—it's not in a proper place. I, I'd even go as far as saying castrated, <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah, because <laughs> well, you can't put dog poo in any bin. It's got to be a dog poo bin, or a, a, we'll accept dog or waste. Or if you can fling it high enough, usually somebody's garden. Or not. Do you ever do that thing when it's like bin day, and people have put the brown bins out for like um, like garden stuff and oh, food and no, stuff? My, my brown bins, glass and plastics, uh, plastic bottles. I will sometimes just pop the poo bag in there. I don't want to carry a hot turd around all day. You're not supposed to put animal waste products in the re uh, food recycling. I don't do that. You just said you do. I don't know where that came from. I don't do it. Out of your face! I don't know where you got that from. Let's move on. Yes, let's. Um, do you like a carb? Oh, clearly. <laughs> how, how do you feel about pasta? I like pasta. Okay, a lot of pasta. What's the most pasta you could eat in a sitting? I don't really know. It just depends what mood I'm in, doesn't it? Or how much I've eaten in the day. I love a gnocchi sandwich. What? Oh, I've not told you about a gnocchi sandwich. No. You fry the gnocchi in butter. You don't do this boiling business. You fry the gnocchi in butter, right? Half a jar of pesto, add some cheese, and then have it in, in a sandwich. You filthy... <laughs> it tastes good, though, doesn't it? You can, you can imagine that taste. Okay, all right. So what sort um, of... I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm off in my old world of a gnocchi sandwich. Uh, this is about in America. Mm. where there have, has been found a mysterious pile of spaghetti, macaroni, and um, elbow pasta. Elbow pasta? Yeah. What's elbow pasta? Like macaroni, but in a... a oh, uh, right, okay. Right. Well, like, like, like cooked pasta. That's a huge amount, isn't it? 500 pounds of it was. Just there? Just there. Woke up one morning, it's all there. Where did it come from, Mike? Well, people were, were lollygagged. 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 There's a Moira Rose word for you. Lollygagging. Um, about you know, where all this pasta's come from. So there's a big mystery in trying to work out where it was. Did it come from space? No. There's not aliens flinging down cooked pasta. Because <laughs> you always overcook, don't you? You always... <laughs> you always... You're like, oh shit, I've got too much. 500 pounds. Yeah, just tip it out of the spaceship. Whoop. But that would then burn up on entry. I didn't say they were right in the atmosphere. They could have just been sort of like oh, three feet floating. <laughs> just three foot above a treetop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, what they found out was that someone was emptying out a dead relative's pantry and they were a hoarder, so they'd hoarded all this dried pasta. And so they just dumped it. That's cooked. No, what had happened was it had rained that much that it had soaked up and looked cooked. Oh. So it wasn't actually cooked. I was just going to say, there's a lot of work <laughs> to boil up that pasta and then dump it. Yeah. Well, the birds can eat it. Can't. Can they not? Why? Are birds they... can't eat pasta. Is it, is it, are they, are they... Lactose intolerant. Not yeah. lactose intolerant. What's gluten the other Gluten, yes. yeah. Yeah, they're gluten-free birds. Um, no, they won't eat it and it, it's actually um, causing a bit of a, a disaster in the ecology. Why? Because it's raw flour and water oh, and milk no. and stuff. Oh, Yeah. Problems. Oh, well, that's very unfortunate, isn't it? You don't care. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. It's very unfortunate. I, oh, I don't know. Just... Uh, you get... Just now. Just th give it... Th just throw it in the bin. Just throw it in the bin is the like answer. Like a normal person. Yeah, yeah. And if you wanted to put other things in the bin, maybe this show, it's at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. You've stayed in hotels before. I have indeed, yes. What's the weirdest thing ever to happen to you in a hotel? <laughs> oh, there's many. Right. So, trip to Amsterdam. Uh huh. Hotel had a jacuzzi bath. Nice. Never experienced that before. You should, a jacuzzi. Pop, you, no, it wasn't me. Shorts on. No. <laughs> Some salt. Um, no, my partner didn't realise that for the jacuzzi bath to work, the water had to, the level of water had to be over the jets. Okay. So he kind of just turned it on. And it was like, you know those like fountains, the musical fountains that you see? <laughs> there was just jet, he was going, oh my goodness, there was just jet wa jets of water spraying in the air and he couldn't find the off switch. <laughs> Drenched the entire bathroom. And you helped? I filmed it. There we go. <laughs> and then I helped. It's like, it's like, it's not my deposit. Off you pop. <laughs> I didn't touch anything. No. Nope. Um, well, this is a story about a man who basically woke up in a, a bit of an alarm. He woke up in a llama? In, in a, an alarm. An alarm. So like going, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> inside an alarm. It's not like... It's a very shocking thing to do <laughs> yeah. to wake up in a hotel. 
went to sleep in a bed. Why am I an animal? Um, as he looked down and realised that the hotel manager was sucking his toes. <laughs> Who's that? Is that the guest or the manager? That's the manager. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Basically, he'd, he'd, um, the manager decided that he wanted to start sucking some toes. As you do. Let himself in. As you do on a night shift in a hotel. No, no, no. Do you know what? Do you know what I've got a hankering for? Toes. Yeah, pretty well. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, it's currently in, in, in jail. Surprise. Aw awaiting his um, court date um, in America. <laughs> what? What? I just, I, you know, if he's not helping himself, is he, with that photograph? I mean, it's not. I mean, it's his. It, Are you saying it's he his looks like a sex offender? Yes. Yes. Well, he is. Yeah, he well, is. Protect, possibly, maybe, depending if he gets found guilty of being caught sucking someone's toes. Is it a crime? It's non consented, so yeah. Okay. So he let himself into the person's room, allegedly let himself into the person's room. Remove the covers from the foot area and went, oh, no, 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 no. I don't like the idea. I, but see, <laughs> it's a risk, because what if they had sweaty feet? I think that's probably what he would be happy about. Or not, you know. It's... Do we have a picture of the person who we sucked the toes of? No. Oh, well, you see, then that's not fair. Because, yeah, if it, because they could have been some sexy toes. <laughs> Couldn't well, that's they? A, that's a defence, is it? I mean, he could only be, he's only human. I mean, if he'd walked in in a pair of sandals and the, those toes were just like, whoa. People have needs. But if they were like claws, then, ugh, deviant. This is, how I, this is how I justify things in my mind. Get your toe out. <sighs> That's all from the buzz this week. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around with us. Coming up, we have our game of the week. watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing Uzakazu, and this is one for our constant companion, well, constant one. It's you, Mike, off you pop with your soggy nappy. <laughs> Says you. Get your plastic bags. Get Game of the Week. Now it's time to play our Uzakazu game. Mike, are you ready? I am indeed, yeah. Are you ready? Born ready. I thought you were about to say balls deep then. Here it is. I know it already. Go on, then. It's salt and pepper and push it. It is. Well done, you. Ooh, baby, baby. Yep, ba baby, like baby. baby. Ooh, baby, baby. Want <laughs> well, to do the next bit? Get up on this. What about the, 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 the verse? Um, push it. What's the push it real good. That's it. Salt and pepper's here and we're in effect. Okay. Next one. Modern music. It's Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. Oh, I never know those ones from her. They all sound the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Next one. Um, you'll, you'll be able to get this one because it's from the 90s. Okay. Um. <laughs> Maybe 
gonna be the one that saves me And after all, you're my wonder wall Bye Um, Oasis Oh, it's the Mike Flowers version No, it wasn't Nobody knows that one It's the same song Did I get it right? Yeah, you did I didn't like Oasis Did you not? Very uncouth Very uncouth gentleman Okay I don't know it, so it's probably Ariana Grande. It's not. I don't know. Not even have a guess. I don't even remember what it was. How it sounded in. No, Toxic blind by Britney Spears. That wasn't Toxic by Britney Spears. That was. It wasn't. How, okay, how's it supposed to go? Um. What I was doing, just not in that really high pitch. That's how You're an ambulance now. Next one. That would be. Um, Celine Dion uh -huh. and um, My Heart Will Go On. Indeed. AKA the theme from Titanic. Right, next one. <laughs> that would be Wake Me Up Before You Go Go by Wham. It is indeed, yeah. Well done, you. I'm shuffling the cards because I think you've read them. Don't be looking through them and choosing. I'm, I'm shuffling. Every day. Every day I'm shuffling. Do, 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 do. That's not the next song. Okay. <laughs> Is it a theme tune? Nope. I thought it was a theme tune from um, Only Fools and Horses. No, because that's... <laughs> I'm sure you went, Beaver Hooky Street. No. No. I don't know it then. No Scrubs by TLC. That didn't sound like... <laughs> Buster. No, I don't. See, it works. What's there? Okay, next one. Is it a new one? Newish. Newish. From the, it's from the last 20 years, so yes, for you it's new. Uh, I don't. It's Billie Eilish. Bad oh, I don't know her. I don't know what she does. Okay. Don't know it. Okay, let's try this one then. <laughs> that is... <laughs> That is Madonna uh -huh. and Like a Virgin. Yes. It's interesting, this, isn't it? All the ones... Oh, it's interesting to, 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 to kind of discover that music of the yesteryear had a tune and music of now is just dirge. Sorry. Okay. Just saying. No. 
Oh, the gallery is singing it. This is oh, why you're okay, getting them. I just realised the I'm gallery gone, is I'm singing gone, all gone. these songs. That's why you're getting them. Hang on. Is it Don't Speak <laughs> by No Doubt? Yes, yeah, surprisingly, after the gallery is singing along to it. <laughs> right, can we mute the gallery, please? No, don't. <laughs> okay. So much. I, I, mean. I don't know it. Okay. It's, and the gallery didn't sing. I was going to say, interestingly, uh, gallery I know know this one, but we're purposely not singing along. It's All Star by Smash Bar. Oh, Smash I don't Mouth. know that one. By who? Uh, Smash Mouth. Hey, you're, you're an All Star. Oh, okay. I get game on. No, hey. <laughs> I don't know. Is it All Star by Smash Mouth? No, you've already had that one. That was All the Small Things by Blink 182. Oh, you see, it's not my genre. <laughs> I don't know it. That doesn't help. Well, it's Don't Stop Believing by Journey. That didn't sound like that. How did it sound then? Anyway, join us after the break where we'll be doing something with science, allegedly. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cod. Now we prepare for our own tomorrow's world, but today, it's Mike, in that science that is. That science that is. There's been an issue, Lee. Has there? I'm bow tieless, I'm nude. Oh no, how will we ever cope? How will we ever go on? I'll tell you how, by making crystals. Crystals? Crystals. That we can wear. No, better than that. What? <laughs> Methylated crystals. Are we making crack? We're not really, no. We're making something that you'll probably enjoy like crack, but yeah. Oh! Um, we're, we're going to form, form small crystals. Hey, okay, because we only have a very small amount of time. Okay. Okay. Um, I <laughs> told you luck then. <laughs> um, so, in front of you should have a, a small, clear plastic bag. Oh, I'm triggered. Huh? I'm triggered. Why? Because there's a plastic bag. And why would a plastic bag trick you, well, you No, I can't be around plastic bags. Because you might <laughs> in one. I have a plastic bag, Mike. Right, okay. So you need to open up your plastic bag. Okay. And then we're going to put in some fluids. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> no solids. Right. So what I suggest is if you fold back the, 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 the top bit. I have, I so have. So pull back, pull back the foreskin of the bag. Um, and then in the bag, you should have some fluids next to you in cups. I do. You're only fluids in this one. I have, I have, oh, I have some orange. You have some orange coloured uh, liquid. Uh, and some plain liquid. And some plain liquid, yeah. Now, both of these contain crystallines, okay? Crystallines? Crystallines, so tiny, teeny, tiny crystals. What am I doing with them? You're dumping them in the oh, bag. Oh, okay. Carefully. Okay. Um, and what these will do is, I do like that noise. Okay. Um, so there you've got a bag full of fluid. 
Okay, I'm just gonna do it, do it now. Okay. Ooh. Ah. You nearly dropped your fluid, didn't you? Got a bag of piss, Mike. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because mine doesn't contain piss. Um, so now what you want to do is you want to try and get some of the air out, so you don't want a big, you don't want a lot of air in it, okay? So the, the way I would do that is probably not the way you should do it, which is to place it down gently and squeeze so you can feel the fluid rising and then pinch. I think I've been quite successful at that. Okay, good. Um, and then quite a way up, oh, mm, yeah. Quite a way up, um, you want a knot in the top of the bag so your fluid can't escape. Ooh. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. Okay, so when you pop it down, it should lie quite flat with not a lot of air. Looks like a breast implant. Okay. See, I find this quite soothing. It's like a bag of piss. I don't know, I've never had a bag of piss. You've had a bag of piss. Well, well when? I know you frequent places. Not in bags. So, yeah. Okay, so inside your fluid bag, there's lots of tiny microscopic crystals. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we need to make them bigger. Do we? And the way that we need to make them bigger is we need to slow them down. Oh my goodness. What makes things go slow? Time. Time, tiredness, tablets. Um, um, would it be the ice that I've got on my ice table? Ice that you would have on your... Right, so what you want to do is you want to pop your, your, your bag of fluid inside your bag of ice. Like that. Now, mm -hmm. I've got a bag of piss inside a bag of ice. Okay. Now, air is not your, your friend at this one, so you want to remove as much air as you can from the bag. Ooh. All right, and then zip it up. Done it. Okay. Now, what will, what will be happening now, in, in this bag, I've forgotten to do something. Oh, no. Which is fine, open up your bag again. Because your ice is cold, but we want to make it super cool. <gasps> super cool. Super cool. It's super so in your cool cup, you should have some white powder. Oh, yes. All right. You want to pop your white powder into your ice. What is this white powder? Magic white powder. It's sodium calcium. Sodium calcium carbonate. It's salt. You, oh, okay. Okay. And then again, make sure you've got as little air as possible in the bag. Zip it up. And then you want to start agitating. So you want to make sure that salt's getting all around that ice. What am I doing? You just want to agitate it all together. How are you doing? Like this. You need to agitate it, Lee. Go and show me. Like this. Okay. Now you'll notice your hands are getting very cold. They are. That's good. Do, do. How long do we do it for? A couple of minutes. Oh. So as you start to, to squish it, you'll start noticing that your, your fluid in the... The my piss bag. seems to be congealing. Mark. Yes. What's happening there is the crystals are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Piss that's... crystals. Huh? Yes, your piss crystals. You're going to get really upset when I tell you to do the next bit, you know. Right. So, are you confident that you've got quite large crystals in your bag? I do. It's like a gelatinous blob. Good. Undo your bag and take out your little bag. And, and then safely close up and move out of the way your ice. Okay. And so there you have, so if you look, you've actually got crystals in there. Oh yes. Quite large ones. Yes. Right? Now because I'm a lovely person, 
All right. If you open up the plastic bag, mm -hmm. okay, and empty it out into maybe one of the cups that didn't have the salt in, just suggesting that one. Because the, the crystals that we've been making bigger are sugar crystals. Oh. Oh, thing. your own time. Sorry, it's just very difficult to manoeuvre. You weren't, you weren't being vigorous enough then. There's only one big glob. It's, it's in a lot of lumps. Yeah, so there we've got some, some crystals. Can I eat it? You can. It's edible. Is it a slushy? Mmm, it is a slushy. And this is going to tell me how careful you were taking out the... Ah! <laughs> you weren't careful enough because you just got a mouthful of salt. <laughs> I, however, have a lovely frozen orange treat. You did that on purpose. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Mm. Mm. No! <laughs> you weren't careful enough, I say carefully. Oh, I'm sad now. Mm. But yeah, that's crystals, and that's science size. Oh, it's lovely and cold. That science, that is. So yeah, dur during, during the little bit of a break there, you discovered something, didn't you? I did. What did you discover, Lee? I, I put my slushy in the salt cup. Which is something I explicitly yeah, told you, you did, not to do. Yeah, you did, but I didn't do. think I had. I'm sad because of, of, the, oh. of the umpteen of these things that you've done, mm. I actually enjoyed doing that. <laughs> and you actually wanted to... <laughs> and I wanted, to, I wanted it, but I can't have it. Oh, well, you can. No. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste nice. Mojito. Mojito? Does that, does that have salt in it? No. No. No, that's sugar and mint. Okay, well, I, I, will, I may try that at home. No, you won't. No, I won't. <laughs> but it's not... That was a lie. <laughs> but the potential is there. The potential. You, what you might do is on the way out go, oh, well, there's, there's some leftover bits there. I'll have another go at it and see if I can put it in a cup that isn't salty. That, there's something you do that with children, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, all of the stuff that that size that is you can do mm, with children. I yeah. get from fun experiments you can do with your children at age five or under. Do you think if you put an entire child in a bag full of salt and salt and what and, and yes, mm. what I do know is if you put alcohol in that, so you put Malibu in there. Oh, it's a it's an alcoholic slush. And that's a treat for everybody oh. apart from the kids, apart from or the alcoholics. Children. Yeah, but that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcast services, look for Chewing The Could. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Chin. Cheers. Drink it, drink it, drink it. <laughs>